Hi everybody, it's Leah, Managing Editor of Phoenix Magazine, and we are starting a new series called Meet Your Makers, where we chat with local artisans, artists, makers of all kinds um, about their process, how they got started, and how to support them now. Here with Madeline Nault of Madeline Nault Accessories. And we're highlighting makers around the valley. Um, you've been one that we've written about before. I think I wrote about you for the first Best of the Valley that I contributed to. Was that like seven years ago? So I don't long. know. I, I've got it on my shelf here. I could look it up if we needed to. <laughs> um, so we want to tell the viewers a little bit about you. So tell us, you know, where are you from um, and how did you come to be in Arizona? I'm originally from Michigan. Um, I moved out here, oh gosh, let me do the math real quick. I think it's coming up on 15 years ago. Um, with my parents, I was old enough that I could still catch the free ride with them. And I really feel like it's the best thing that I could have ever done. So big culture shock moving from Michigan to here. What was that like, you know, going from cold climate and woods to super hot desert? Yeah, it's, it's definitely different in every single way. I think the biggest change was that I lived out like just in a really little town outside of any big cities. And so when we moved here, we moved to Phoenix and it was like, oh my gosh, I live in a, in a big city now. And it took me a long time to be phased by the weather. I feel like, you know, for probably the first five years or more, it was just like, oh, this is amazing. Like warm weather all the time. And then I reached a point where I'm like, okay, it's too hot. And then the winters were freezing to me again. So I feel like I'm officially like, a Phoenician now because I'm just a total sissy for both the hot and the cold. That's how I am. I'm like, I just complain all the time, no matter what season mm -hmm. it is. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> all right. Well, tell me a little bit about your life as a creative person. Were you a kid who was really interested in art? Um, did your parents nurture that in you? And tell me, you know, a little bit about your journey to becoming a designer. So, um, yes, I've always loved to do creative little projects and my mom definitely nurtured that she was really creative herself. And so she always had just craft supplies around and, um, she sewed herself. And so she had our sewing machine and she had fabric out all the time. And she just let me explore that, um, we had a basement in Michigan and that's where all that stuff was at. And I would just be in the basement for hours, just playing, creating different things, whether it was like with paper or beads or sewing. My mom taught me to sew. I think when I was probably, I mean, with a needle and thread, I remember as, as young as like first grade. Wow. And then as I got older, then I learned how to use the sewing machine. And it's just always been a hobby of mine. I, I just think it's fun to make whatever it may be. And so it turned into purses when I was in high school and like, I was really awkward and just wanted to have like this really unique, like punk purse that I could sew my band patches onto and my friends just asked me you know will you make me one will you make me one and so it's always just been this hobby of mine that has organically grown up with me and one day I realized oh my gosh I'm a business <laughs> and actually started to take myself seriously so Awesome. And what had you had any other jobs or careers prior to making this transition? Yeah, I've always, I've always kind of, I've always said that I have a side hustle. Mm -hmm. um, this is the first time in my life where I'm not like I just, my business is it. Mm -hmm. um, but no, no exciting jobs. I mean, just the normal worked at a grocery store when I was, when I was a teenager and mm -hmm. 
just we yeah, had just random things so can you talk a bit about how you fit your creativity in when you have a regular job and because I think that's something that a lot of creative people struggle with you know where to find the time and then how do you know when you can make the transition into making it your full-time hustle and not just a side gig yeah um I think it's if you want it to be your full-time thing I think that that's what you prioritize um I mean I know it's different for everybody like if you've got a a somewhat serious job. Like, I feel like I've never really had a, a super serious job where I couldn't devote more of my time or my focus to my business. That's why I always call it like my side hustle, because it's just like this extra thing that I'm doing as a source of income. Mm -hmm. Um, I think it depends on if you are able to give your business the the time and energy that you need, mm -hmm. then if you can do them and coexist at the same time until you are making more money with your business, then that's awesome. But I feel like for some people, like if they can't dedicate the time to it and they really want to just sometimes you got to take that leap of faith and, and, and just do it and give it all the time that you want to give it and see how it grows. Mm -hmm. And then if it's not growing the way you want to, like knowing you have that plan B that you can like do as the side hustle and still keep doing it. But I mean, I think for anybody who does this, like it's definitely a dance of like, Oh, look at me. Look at me. I'm doing it. I'm doing it. Oh, should I get a real job? Uh, oh, wait, look at me. I'm doing it. I'm doing it. Like, mm -hmm. and I'm not sure if that ever ends. I mean, you'd have to ask someone else. Cause I sure don't have the answer. So <laughs> I'm sure because it fluctuates like, like you have to be such a self-starter getting yourself into markets. I know that's a big part of your commerce, if you will. Can you talk mm -hmm. a little bit about, you know, where people can buy your products and, you know, ways that you showcase them. Yeah. So, um, I love doing in-person events. I do a lot of pop-ups. Obviously that's changed a little bit right now, but, um, hopefully slowly getting back into things. Um, yeah, I do the different markets and then I have, some people who buy from me wholesale. And so I have some, some stores and resorts that I'm in here in Arizona and a couple scattered across the country. Mm -hmm. um, E-commerce is something that I'm, as a creative person, like it, technology is not my strong suit whatsoever. So that's hopefully in the works <laughs> very soon. I mean, a lot of times I will sell, um, just directly through Instagram. Right. Um, but beyond that, it needs a little, a little more of my attention <laughs> for yeah, sure. That's like a full-time job in itself, <clears throat> you know, just like order mm -hmm. fulfillment. Mm -hmm. I don't know how anybody does it. Yeah. And can you talk a little bit about your actual products and how your line has grown over the years? You started with, they're all vinyl purses, right? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, um, when I first started, it was more um, just it was the most accessible to me. Finding vinyl was not only more cost efficient, but it had the variety of colors and textures that I was looking for. And so I always thought that as I grew, I would up my game a little bit more and like get get into you know, more fine materials like leathers and whatever else. And, and I just, not only for me, like I really came to love what I, what I work with, but then I also kind of became known as being this animal friendly brand, which I'm not myself a vegan. So I would never promote myself as a vegan brand, but <clears throat> I really technically am. And so, yeah, it's just kind of been like, I feel like I found my niche. I found what I like to work with and I've just kind of stuck with it. So and it's going back to the vegan thing. I have a piece of yours that you did a collaboration with Tracy at Strawberry Hedgehog, the mm -hmm. little, it's like a purple 
little pouch with the silver and I think she had intention oils in it. Mm -hmm. And I use it every time I travel. I use it as like my little travel kit. Oh, I love it. Yeah. Yeah. And that's what I, that's what I love about my stuff is like, people ask me like, well, what's it for? And I say, well, I sell it as a wallet, but really it's like anything that you need it for. And I feel like, especially as women, we always just have a bunch of stuff that we need to carry. And I'm like, it doesn't need to be a purse. Like you can just throw it into another bag and Mm -hmm. bags and bags. Yeah. Yeah. And there's certain people who I I love them. Like at my events, they'll come up to me and they're like, look at, and they like whip out like five of them, like in each size, like, look at, I have this one and this one and this one. And I'm like, that is just the biggest compliment. Thank you. <laughs> it's those nesting dolls. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> That's so cool. Well, tell me a little bit about your inspiration as far as the, your color palette, the designs you use. Is it, do you go fabric shopping and then you kind of take it from there or walk us through that? <clears throat> yeah. So I feel like um, my inspiration comes from what I'm inspired by at the time. So I mentioned before how my brand has organically grown with me and I feel like my products have too, because it is just such a, I don't know, an extension of me that it's like, Oh, I'm feeling, I'm feeling florally lately or, Oh, I'm feeling more whatever right now. Like it just kind of ends up coming out in what I create. So it's definitely inspired by my world and what, what I'm around and what I'm inspired by. So I love it. And the sizes that you offer, what is kind of like the range of sizes and also your price range? So, um, I start off with just a wallet, which is just, you know, fits the basics Mm -hmm. and then they just kind of work up from there. Um, my lowest price, I believe is 20 and then it goes up to, um, 75, just depending on the size and the detail of the purse. Right. And I love that you do custom orders. I always love seeing those on Instagram. Like when you do for a bridal party, it's always cool. Or I think my favorite custom was when you did one for, um, a book blogger and I had the little book that opened. I was like, Oh, it's so cute. (laughs) Yeah. The customs are hands down my favorite part about doing this because not only is it fun to see what I'm capable of, like they just give me these ideas that I never would have thought of before Mm -hmm. that I'm like, Oh yeah. Like I want to do that for sure. And so, yeah, I love doing the customs, whether it's like you said, for, um, bridesmaids, um, or I do a lot of pet purses. I've somehow fallen into that. So I do a lot of um, custom dogs and cats on wallets or purses. Um, and then, yeah, pretty much whatever people can think of. Like you said, the book was one of my favorites, but I've had so many random ones. I've had somebody who came to me and, and said that her friend was obsessed with a uh, shake shack, <laughs> like to the point where her and her, <laughs> her and her husband actually got engaged at a shake shack. And so she asked if I could make a Shake Shack wallet for her. And I was like, okay. And then I had another one where they asked me to, um, excuse me, to make um, a Baja Blast slush from Taco Bell. I remember that one. (laughs) And I was like, "Uh, yes, (laughs) yes, I will do that for sure. Like, I just love these things that people come up with. And it's so fun to bring it to life and, and to have that challenge of like, how am I going to put a Baja Blast on a purse? And then when I do it, I'm like, I put a Baja Blast on a purse. <laughs> yes. It's, I love that you can go very whimsical like that. And then you also have some very just like elegant kind of classic designs. It's cool that you have that breadth. It's fun. And I feel like that, that kind of goes off of what I'm inspired by because I feel like I love I love all those things you know like I Mm -hmm. I love the 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 taco wallets and I also love the the really pretty gold lace and everything else so yeah I think it I think it's fun and and it does end up being this 
one extreme to the other. And what about you personally? Which of your designs are you carrying around day to day? Do you switch it up or do you have a go-to? Um, right now, <laughs> excuse me, right now, um, because I'm trying to carry the least amount of stuff possible when I go into a store, I'm very much just carrying like a little wallet. Mm-hmm. And I feel like I carry the same wallet for maybe like half a year or so. And then I'm like, okay, it's time to, it's time to treat myself and make something new. Or sometimes I make things that I intend on selling and I play this game with myself that I'm like, okay, if it doesn't sell, I'm just going to keep it. And then, and then like, I'll be sitting there like at an event and like people will be looking at it. And as soon as they walk away, I'll just grab it. I'm like, no, I don't want to, I don't want to risk it. I'm going to keep that one for myself. So (laughs) We well, like this one spoken for. Thank you. Yes. Yes. <laughs> so cool. And what about your process when you're actually sewing? Do you like to have quiet? Do you like to listen to music? I know you have a, a little girl, so you're juggling being a mom while you're making all your stuff. I, I am totally a person who has to have like a whole process. Like I cannot work while she's around. <laughs> like I need to be focused I need to be in my own little zone Mm -hmm. um I kind of go in phases like sometimes I'll listen to audiobooks or I'll listen to music right now I'm really into just watching stuff on Netflix while Mm -hmm. I sew because I don't really have a lot of time to do that being a mom that I'm just like when I'm working I just put my show on (laughs) and I'm just sewing along so Do you have to like focus a lot or can, is it kind of meditative where you get kind of lost in it and like your hands just keep going? Yeah, it's definitely, definitely kind of meditative. So it depends on where I'm at in the process too. Like in the beginning, like when I'm planning out how to do stuff, like it takes a little bit more focus, but then when I'm actually making it, like putting it all together and sewing it, I'm just kind of like in a zone. And there's sometimes when like, if I'm repeating the same thing over again, Mm -hmm. like I'm just doing it so much that like I reach a point where I'm like, Oh, Oh, I did them all. (laughs) And I, I love doing like, I really like kind of like mindless stuff like that. Like Mm -hmm. I've always said that, like, if I wasn't doing this, I would just like to work in a place where like, I just had to staple books all day long or something. Mm -hmm. Cause I like, I like having something that I don't have to think about that I can just daydream (laughs) while I'm doing it so it's kind of nice I can do I can do that uh at least half of the time when I'm working so have any like rituals like oh I have to have a cup of tea or I like my coffee or I like the morning Mm -hmm. yeah I think that it used to be more so when whenever I wanted to but now it's definitely on a schedule like Mm -hmm. I plan everything for around when my daughter naps like that's when I work is when she goes to sleep during her nap or after she goes to bed so that's cool and talk a little bit about you know getting to know your clients over the years do you have repeats and why is it so important for us to get out and and meet our makers as you know we're doing this video series um to promote that because I think that's a cool thing is you can have relationships and not just you know buy something off a shelf Mm -hmm. that has been one of the most rewarding things about doing this for sure Mm -hmm. um actually right before COVID hit, we were actually planning on moving to Michigan. Mm -hmm. And um, that was probably the most moving that I have moved that I have felt since, you know, meeting all of these people who have been in my life through my business through all these years. Like I've always been really I've just always thought that it was really special, but before we were going to move, like, I just could not believe all the ways that these people who have supported my business through the years showed up for me. Like, I remember one day I was just crying because it, it is so much more than, like you said, just going to the store and buying something off the shelf. Like, not only the relationships that I have with these people, like watching their lives evolve, but they have 
that with me as well. And I think that connection is what really makes it different and special. Like, it's not just that you're like buying this piece. It's like, you're buying this piece from this person who has something that you, that you admire or that you can connect with. And so it ends up being so much more. And I just, I'm such a sappy person. <laughs> like, we have I just, common. <laughs> like, I just can't, I just can't even properly express like what that means to me. That's like definitely my favorite part about doing this and like being the face to this business and like doing events is just that connection that, that you build with people and, Mm -hmm. and just feeling so part of a community too, whether that's through other makers or just by seeing these people who live here and are part of our community. It's just so cool. Mm -hmm. That's such a big point. And it's something that I admire in watching you all on Instagram. I lurk all of your pages (laughs) and you give me so many good ideas to feature in the magazine too. Like you have um, in your highlight stories, like local makers that you love and you own their Mm -hmm. stuff. And so I appreciate that on my end, getting cool ideas from you. And then you, you know, are friends with these people, but then also support their businesses. They support yours. It's so cool. Mm -hmm. It, it just, it's just so cool. Like I can't even come up with other words for it. It's just so cool. How do you want people to feel when they purchase or use your purses and wallets? Um, I think my big thing and when I buy something is just like the joy factor. Like I just want it to bring them joy and I want it to be something that like, you know, each time they pull it out or each time they use it, they just feel like it brings them joy. Like, mm-hmm. I don't feel like purses are necessarily like an item that, that everybody just needs, you know, like, yes, we need something, but it's not like you need to get a new one every so often or that. So it really is like a joy factor thing. And so that's just, I just, want to bring people joy by it because that's what when I buy something that's what it does for me like I it makes me happy every time I use it so that's what I want for them too love it um and do you have any people who like collect your stuff maybe people who purchased multiples like you said the person who had so many yeah I do and it just blows my mind like it's just it's just the best thing and most rewarding thing that I could ask for um I definitely have a handful of people who have quite a large collection and it's really cool too, because, (laughs) excuse me, like I said, how I evolve and how what inspires me has evolved, like, so has how I've made stuff, like Mm -hmm. people will, will whip out some like OG Madeline Alt accessories uh-huh. and they're like I still use this one all the time I'm like oh yeah and then, and then like I just keep growing too so but it's really cool that that it still brings them joy that's that's all I can ask for so when did you start the business which year I honestly don't even know when I officially started my business because it's always been a hobby of mine and I've I've always been (laughs) I've always been doing it and like I was doing events for longer than I considered myself a business and so I I mean I think I officially got like a business license maybe in like maybe 2013 or so so how long, how long has that been? Not nine years. That's probably when I met you. Yeah. I think it really was like, that's when I feel like I was probably getting serious. Into, like, yeah. That time. Cause like I said, I had been doing it just thinking like, Oh, I have this hobby. Mm-hmm. And it was somebody else who said like, Oh, how long have you been in business for? And I'm like, well, I'm not a business. And they're like, you're selling stuff. You're a business. And I was like, 
do I need to do something? Like, do I need to get a license? <laughs> like, do I need to wear a suit every day? So I'm a businesswoman. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, that's so funny. And what, when other creatives come to you for advice on launching their own business, what do you tell them? And, you know, what would you tell other aspiring makers? I think that just from what I've experienced, like, really focusing on not only the product, but the connection. Um, And I mean, I feel like everybody always says this, but it's kind of hard to explain is like finding your why of like, why do you want to do this? And then, um, I mean, as far as the logistics, I'm probably not the right person to ask that. Cause like I said, I've just kind of been <laughs> winging it, but, um, I think most I people like, are winging it. Right. Yeah. I feel like who isn't right now. Right. Um, I think that like my biggest tip would be that when people give you compliments, like make a mental note of that and write, either write it down or just like really like ingrain it in there so that when you have days that are hard and you're you don't remember your why anymore of like why am I doing this then you can pull out those things like oh yeah they said this about me or they said this you know this product made them feel this way and how much it meant to them like it makes it easier to keep going when it gets hard and I think that would be my biggest tip to someone who is doing this is, is remember how it feels when it feels really good to carry you through the times when it might not feel so good. That's so lovely. That's a good advice for all of life. Yeah. That's great. Any other obstacles that you faced and maybe how you face them, like maybe biggest, biggest obstacles, biggest triumphs. Um, I think that um, just finding, finding where you fit Mm -hmm. is a big trial and error of like, you just kind of got to test it all out until you find what works for you. Mm -hmm. Um, And then just, and this is not something that I could have said until this past year is like, how are you going to reinvent or how are you going to just look at things differently if the way that you're doing it isn't an option or isn't working anymore. So this past year, which I know I'm not alone in this, like that's probably been the biggest struggle is like, how are you going to do this when what you do typically is no longer an option or isn't working if that's the case. So Yeah, like we featured you when you made the pivot to make more masks in addition to your purses and wallets. Mm -hmm. So that was definitely a big one. Where can people get your stuff now? Which local businesses can they order at or how can they reach you on Instagram? Um, Through my Instagram, um, Madeline Alt Accessories is probably the best way um, or through my website, which is madelinealtaccessories.com and through my website, then you can see the full list of places that, um, that I am in and, um, through both my website and my Instagram, I'll always post about any upcoming events that I'm going to be doing. So you can shop in person and yeah, that's, (laughs) that's about it. (laughs) Those are all my prepared questions. Is there anything else that you want viewers, readers to know? Just that I'm really grateful for you guys. <laughs> Yay. That's a good note to close on. Thank you so much, Madeline, for your time. We really appreciate you. Thank you, Leah. It's very mutual. Hugs from afar. <laughs> yes. Yeah, so-